Good morning, McFly subscribers. So, I'm going out carp fishing again. That was so much fun last time, I decided that I had to do it again. really excited because I finally got my Sage Method six weight back and that'll be a lot better for catching carp. Now it's going to be raining up in Durango and the surrounding area. I was going to try to do a backpacking trip and go up and hit some small little creeks and lakes up by, you know, north of Durango, but I decided not to. I decided because it's going to be raining. I can't do a backpack trip. I can't spend the night in the rain. I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> Who wants to do that? So that'll, that'll be either the next video or the following. But, but today should be fun going out for carp. Many of you had asked uh, what high water is. I had mentioned it a few times. Um, basically, it's uh, the San Juan River is a tailwater to Navajo Lake. And La Navajo Lake is right at the top of this dam here. But if you take a look right here, you can see water is flowing out of the bottom of the dam, the spillway there. They control how much water goes down into the San Juan. So because they control it, they allow how much water is, is coming out. And usually about once a year, Although right before this year, it had been seven years before they did it at this river specifically. But basically high water is when they rush a lot of water out. Usually it's a trickle coming out about 300 uh, gallons per minute, I think it is, or something like that. Um, and now it's, it's about 4,000. So they're, they're putting a whole lot more water in and that's what high water is. Basically it's, it's rushing the water down a lot more. Now, you might be asking, why would they do that? Why would they put so much water through the river? I mean, it makes it difficult to wade, makes, you know, it it's kind of stops people from fishing as much. Um, why would they do that? Well, the reason why is Navajo Lake will fill up. It fills up too much. Right now, it's over full. Every time that it rains, uh, snows up in the mountains, that drains down. Um, in the in the spring like right now into that lake and they need to release some of the water so it doesn't spill over but it has an added benefit the benefit is that moss and um, junk will grow in the river and when that water flows down at fast speeds it will rip the that you know It'll basically cl kind of clean the river in a way. So, so that is an added benefit. Usually after high water, the, the fishing improves a little. So I pulled in the float and fish to get a few things and talk fishing. It was a beautiful but cloudy morning. All right, so I am ready with my sage rod back. And I'm going to be using the same fly I did last time to catch that big carp. Now I've got my new net with me, with my wading belt. Figured that's the best way to carry it. It is a little larger of a net, so kind of need a wading belt, stick it through, that kind of thing. Isn't that a handsome looking setup? Sage method rod with a red blank and then the fire black. Sage 2200. That is a nice looking setup. Thing you have to worry about out here, guys, is that there are snakes this time of year. Um, just be careful where you're walking. We do have rattlesnakes out in this way. It is the desert, and they do hang out. I've seen them. Uh, so just be careful out there. Okay, as I come up. I've got to be quiet. Carp are very spooky. It's all flats because uh, the water has actually come up quite a bit since the last time I was here. All this right here 
is new. This is not at all part of the lake. It just kind of spilled off into it. But that might mean there's carp here. There's probably carp all through this. So I'm going to walk around and see if I can find them. I don't really know how deep this is. And the sun isn't out yet, and it's hard for me to see in the water. But I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to try to sneak up on them. You want to crouch, you want to get low, you don't want them to see you. Something right there. Oh, it's a carp. Alright. Oh, scared him away. I'm gonna start walking around and see if I can't find them. There were a few carp tailing around these flats. However, I kept spooking them by getting too close before I saw them. All this is like flats. So I'm gonna keep on walking, see if I can't see them tailing. There's a carp tailing right here. As soon as I put the camera down, it was gone. Boy, these guys are like hillbilly uh, bonefish, really. It's all flats fishing, but walking through swamp rather than uh, beautiful tropical water. I'm gonna make my way over to the other lake here. There's three of them in a row. So I'm gonna try the next one over, see if that has any luck. Yep, I saw a snake. There are many around this area, so be careful. I kept walking around and didn't see one carp. I'm having a hard time trying to find the carp. I see them, but by the time I see them, it's too late. They're already, uh, they've already been spooked. So, I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. You guys that have fished carp probably multiple times, a lot more than me, could tell me maybe what I'm doing wrong. But as I get up to them, I, I just, I can't see. It's too overcast, so I can't see into the water and therefore they see me before I see them. And that's not very good. They're spooked. Uh, I spook them every single time, so. Well, I decided to go and fish some trout on the San Juan, where I know I'll at least get one bite. And sure enough, one bit. But he was small. There are still places to fish on the San Juan during high water. Hey, and another. Oh, uh, also small. And by the way, guys, I was wetting my hands before picking the fish up. Another small one. And yet another. Well, a couple small ones, really small. Wasn't much of a fight on this six weight. I was hoping for the, the carp, 
but you know, fishing's not always good. Kind of overcast. It's been spitting rain on and off. I think the, the trout are just really uh, deep where I can't reach them, so.